Hey Liz, I was reading this fascinating section on leadership for whitewater paddling trips. It really dives into how a leader should behave, not just the planning and organizing aspects. That sounds really useful, especially for those of us who end up leading group paddling trips. What did it say about leadership qualities? It mentioned that effective leaders need to balance qualities like decisiveness, determination, and assertiveness with honesty, empathy, and openness. The idea is to get the job done while also understanding and managing people well. That makes a lot of sense. You need to be able to take charge when necessary but also relate to and bring out the best in your team members. What about leadership styles? The text described a spectrum of leadership styles, from authoritarian or dictator-like at one end to extremely laid-back or laissez-faire at the other. It said the most effective leaders can adapt their style based on factors like the situation, time constraints, the task at hand, and the personalities and expectations of the group members. Flexibility seems key. You might need to be more authoritarian in emergency situations where time is critical. But most of the time, a more collaborative or democratic approach where you get input from the group could work better. Exactly. And it covered different approaches to decision making too, from the leader making all the decisions authoritatively to building full consensus with the group. The text recommended seeking consensus when possible for better buy-in but using other methods like majority rule if consensus can't be reached or if time is limited. Those all seem like great insights for leaders to keep in mind. Finding the right balance and being adaptable to the circumstances seems to be the overarching advice. Yes, absolutely. The main takeaway was that there's no single, right, way to lead, but effective leaders have to find an approach that works for their own style and the dynamics of their particular group. Makes total sense. Thanks for sharing those highlights. I'll have to check out that full section myself. It seems like a very useful framework for leadership. Definitely. It also talked about how different factors affect which leadership style will be most effective. For example, the leader's own personality, the group's expectations, the time available, immediate danger, and the nature of the task. Right, so a leader's preferred style might not always be the best fit for every situation. They need to be able to adapt based on these factors. Exactly. For instance, if a leader is naturally laid back but is leading a group with a military background, they might need to adopt a more authoritarian approach to meet the group's expectations. And vice versa, an authoritarian leader might need to relax their style with a more anarchic group of paddlers to avoid a mutiny. Given enough time, the group might accept the leader's effectiveness, allowing them to revert to their preferred style. Otherwise, the group might perceive the leadership as weak. The text also gave an example of a leader named Lisa who adjusted her style throughout a trip. She started formally to ensure everyone knew the plan, then became more informal as she realized the group was competent. She switched to a benevolent dictator when a young paddler wanted to run a rapid he wasn't ready for, and became a dictator during a life-threatening situation. That example really illustrates the importance of flexibility. Lisa adapted her style based on the group's needs and the situation at hand, which is crucial for effective leadership. Absolutely. And when it comes to decision-making, the text outlines several methods, authoritarian, democratic, consensus, and false consensus. Each has its pros and cons, and the choice depends on the situation and the group's dynamics. So, an authoritarian approach is fast and decisive but might lower morale if the team doesn't trust the leader's plan. A democratic approach involves the group and can boost morale but might not always yield the best solution. Consensus ensures everyone is on board but can be slow, and false consensus might preserve unity, but isn't always genuine. Exactly. The key is to choose the right approach for the situation. An effective leader will seek consensus if possible but won't waste time if it's clear that not everyone will agree. They might go for majority rule or make an unaided decision if time is of the essence. There's no one-size-fits-all answer. Leaders need to find what works best for them and their group. Thanks for sharing all this, Sam. It's given me a lot to think about for our next trip. No problem, Liz. I'm glad you found it helpful. Let's keep these principles in mind and see how we can apply them to improve our leadership skills.